Hey guys, it's Jonathan from the Howard Hospitality Group. Welcome to another long time awaited uh, meet the industry. And tonight is a big one. This is a huge deal. Uh, big news that came out in the vending industry today and uh, press release, the whole deal, man. This is serious. So joining me tonight for this big news is, you know, of course, one of my best friends ever, Matt from Galaxy Games 843. And joining us is the new owner of CanyonMachines.com, Andy Denton. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, great to be here. Oh man, well it's excited to have you. Um, exciting news, uh, you know it was it was. It, I mean everybody's a buzz all over. Not only the Discord, Facebook, everywhere, everybody's talking about it. So this is big news and big excitement, and right before the big show. So it is like you couldn't have picked a better time to announce this. I think I think this is this is when everybody's got. It seems to me kind of when in the industry when it comes to like shows is that there's kind of a little lull. And then about, you know, a month or a month and a half before the show comes, everybody's talking about it, you know, but this is like the perfect time and it's everybody's talking about the big NBVA show uh, and the amusement expo. So this is perfect timing. So usually the way that I do these uh, meet the industry uh, things, and it's different because Matt's here to help me tonight, which is awesome. Yes. Uh, is um, tag we, team. Yeah, we're tag team. <laughs> so, um, uh, and it's because, you know, for us, we were so excited. I mean, Matt and I, just, we, were, we were like so excited about this going on and the and, and what's coming. And we're all get, we're going to get into that. But um, usually I do a break the ice kind of question and uh, for you and to, to kind of get people to know you in a different way. And the break the ice question I chose for tonight for you is what is your favorite video game or amusement game of all time and why? Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> I played a lot of video games growing nice. up. Nice. That's what we like yes. to hear. <laughs> and for there was a one year there where my mother had an ice cream store uh when I was younger and like 14 years old and she had an arcade. And I played Joust probably oh, nice. 6 hours a day easily, you know, and it took quarters. So I would steal quarters from the cash register to keep playing. <laughs> Yeah, and we, Gauntlet was probably something I played with my brothers as well uh, over and over. But, you know, Super Mario Brothers, all those things. So, um, Or regular Mario Brothers uh, uh, was really the, the thing um, at that time. But uh, Joust was probably fine. I love that game. And, and Sam yeah. got one of those arcade one-ups in his room, and it's got Joust on it. And and I, we, him and I go around and around with that game. We love that game. So good choice. That's a good one. <laughs> And, and and Matt and I are we're into old video games, so that's that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the first like serious question, I wouldn't say it's serious, but the first question uh, we have for you tonight wait, wait, is: Wait, wait, oh. Matt, uh, Matt has a Donkey Kong, right? I do. I've got a Donkey <laughs> Kong, a Miss Pac Man, a Doctor Mario. Like, I'm kind of you, I'm kind of a, a classic arcade collector. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I mean. I'm a big fan of King of Kong and that, you know, so yes. are you, are you doing your, your homework on that? Or are you like, are you studying up trying to get good? I've, I've been playing, um, <laughs> obviously not, uh, not competitively, but, um, yeah. my personal best record is like 390,000. So I'm way off compared to those guys in King of yeah. Kong, but Yes. You know, you know, I can make a quarter last almost an hour on Donkey Kong, which nice. is, you know, a pretty That's tall good. feat because m the average Donkey Kong game lasts about 90 seconds. Oh, so, wow. And I you play a lot. refurbished that machine, too. You redid I that did. machine yourself. Yeah. It's it's kind of funny. I actually, um, this is back in the day when people were posting things on Craigslist. You know, somebody posted that they had some arcade games in their storage unit they wanted to sell. And me not knowing what arcade games were there, I was like, well, you know, I collect arcade games and I buy arcade games, so I'm going to go check it out. So I got in contact with the person, met them at some, like, shady storage locker. Mm -hmm. They opened it up, and they, oh, my God, like, there's a red Nintendo cabinet. And, you know, the red ones are the rare ones. So oh. I'm like, I'm trying not to show my excitement. I'm like... <laughs> Uh, how about that red one back there? How much do you want that for? You know, what do you want for that one? He's like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't work. I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I can probably figure out how to make it work. I, I was like, how much do you want? He's like, uh, give me 150 bucks. I was like, there you go. <laughs> Backing up the truck. Put on his back yes. and stand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I made sure that I took it right then and there before anyone had a chance to change their mind. 
Yes. And then yeah. brought it home, got it working, and then of course restored it to brand new. Yeah, it's really oh, nice. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know if I've seen that in your videos, but uh, that's great that you'd have to show that off. Very cool. Well, from what I understand, Andy, you're kind of local to me. You might have to come play it sometime. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm actually <laughs> in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Just Which is where I'm at. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Stones throw from Matt. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, you know lunch dates uh, during the week uh, if we there can, we go. You know, so things like that. So very cool. Excellent. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> oh no, what? I, that's that's good. No, I mean, and, and the thing is, is like you know, I, I think that you'll like what I've learned in being in the industry for um, almost three or two and a half or so years now is that. There's a lot of really interesting people in this industry and they come from like so many different backgrounds. Yeah. Totally. Like, you know, totally. because usually a lot or I wouldn't say usually, but a lot of the times this is not their first job, you know what I mean? Or like their, you know, their main job. So some a lot of people have side hustles doing this kind of stuff. And so you meet people, they're like, Oh yeah, I work in television or whatever, but I just have a few can't, you know, and it's like that is so cool, you know, because these people have like a lot to share and just they're just very cool. So it's neat when you get to talk to people about what they do. And I think the MBVA is a great place to do that. So you've got a lot of excitement coming up in a week and a half. So or yeah, what is that? Like it's exactly one week, right? Well, it technically, yeah. one week from right now, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be in Las Vegas. Uh, today will be the end. Of, like at this time, at this week, at this time, one week from now, we will have completed all of the Seminar. seminars, yeah. and then we'll be looking forward to the show the next morning. Yeah, we'll be we'll be getting ready to go to the dinner with all the industry people. So with both Correct. sides, the amusement Correct. and the MVVA side. So very cool. So um, we we want to know your story. So tell yeah, us, tell, tell, tell us, us, tell us your story. Tell us like how, I mean, obviously I'm sure there's some information you can't tell us, but yeah. tell us what you can about how this whole thing took place. Yeah. And about you too. Like I want to know of your course, story. Uh, yeah. You of know, course about, yeah, you. about you. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll give you a little bit of both, I guess. Okay. Um, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time and, uh, I think a guy from my mother's side, my, uh, <laughs> My mother was always really good at that, but I uh, have four brothers and I'm the middle of brother and they, you know, we, we just always kind of had a little projects and little things. Um, I went to school as a, as a civil engineer, graduated from Clemson University as a, as a civil engineer, built U.S. embassies and large construction projects overseas um, for a few years and then uh, the internet came out and, um, at, at, at like the end of my college career, I kind of, you know, like, what is, you know, I started seeing people surfing on, on, the, on the web at the time. And I'm like, what is, what are those pages World Wide web? And so my older brother started a web company, uh, and almost immediately after learning about the internet. And, uh, he had like, at the time, believe it or not, it, this is the truth. He had like, an earlier vision of, of face, what Facebook is today. And he started working with colleges, building up, you know, college pages. That was really uh, hard for him to scale, at, you know, way in the early ages. And so uh, he transitioned to real estate. Uh, my mother was a real estate agent and she's like, you've been trying to build these websites for, you know, fraternities and sororities. And like, my business needs a website. You need to come talk to my boss. And the next day the boss says, yes, build me a website. They sign a check and he's started doing real estate websites for a long time. And uh, I got really jealous of that being a civil engineer, you know, and he thought he was doing some really fun stuff. And <laughs> I love, I'm a big idea guy. And I, uh, you know, eventually it didn't take me long. I, I think I, about seven years after being an engineer, I'm like, I'm taking, I'm taking the leap. And I, I kind of joined the family business and, doing real estate with him and, uh, and my father, online real estate. And that's just essentially, you know, selling leads and figuring out things. Uh, but that time of uh, being an engineer and uh, kind of watching what my brother did, I was always moonlighting and trying to figure the, you know, the internet out. I was building web pages, you know, I was buying ads before Google ads came out. Uh, so I've always kind of uh, been involved in internet marketing at the, from the early stages. Um, lucky enough to have met some really smart people, a lot smarter than me that have, uh, you know, kind of blazed trails as internet entrepreneurs. 
who uh, a lot of them I still call friends. And, you know, I, I've been kind of doing that ever since. Then there, that story kind of creates a, uh, there's a little bit of a, a road, uh, I guess a bump in the road is, is the right phrase. Uh, about 10 years ago, I met my wife and, you know, we were dating and she was like, what do you do again? She was like, didn't really quite understand it. Um, I think at the time I was trying to, you know, build Amazon brands at the time. And uh, we quickly got married uh, within a year of meeting each other. And I realized that she was a she was kind of woman that needed a man with a W-2, like needed a man (laughs) with a steady paycheck. And so I uh, I joined the corporate world and started um, kind of moved. It it was a, a good big transition going back into that corporate setting and um uh, gosh man it was great it was a great um thing for me uh i worked with a, a great brand Le Creuset here in charleston and you know i worked there for about seven years so uh, and what that time there did it refined you know my skill set as a um, brand strategist and a digital strategist uh but what it did it really validated all those skills that I learned on my own uh, over the years, Uh, you know, walking into a corporate environment, you um, with you didn't I I, over the course of years, I didn't have anyone to validate like, yeah, those that's a great idea. Or it was just like it was trial and error. Did it work? Did I make money? (laughs) Did I? uh, Right. And, you know, um, I knew my I was succeeding, but I I also knew that there were people making a lot more money than I did at, at the time. And, but it was, it was really incredibly validating my time at Le Creuset. Um, Le Creuset, I think is the proper for a, a way to, to say it. Um, so long story short, uh, COVID happened and we were, uh, we found out that we were pregnant with a third child. Nice. And um, it was a hard season, you know, for everyone, for sure. But here we were in the mid, the the height of COVID, pregnant, you know, which was wow. a big risk factor. So we, and my wife and I both work were working incredibly demanding jobs at the time, and we had two small children at home, <laughs> you know. So we would. Um, but you're trying to protect. From all protect that, right? yeah. yeah so you you know we both had full-time jobs so we would take four hour shifts trying to do a full-time job in four hours so we would wake up one person would have the kids in the morning while the other person worked and then at lunch we would switch and she would you know um the other was would, the other would take care of the kids and the other one would work and literally try you know try to cram eight hours of work into four hours and um we did that, you know, how long did COVID happen? I mean, it was a long time, right? It was forever. Yeah, it was yeah, forever. It seemed like forever, yeah. So, um, and then then founding, founding out we were pregnant, uh, I think we we sat in the living room one Christmas, like, and looked at each other. We're like, I, I cannot do this another year. Yeah. And uh, quickly decided that one of us should quit our job. And uh, I I think I drew the, the short straw. And I, <laughs> I, I, you know sadly had to quit my job um so there i was you know and i had i've been a, an entrepreneur for a while so I've, I've built some businesses and i've been lucky enough to, to sell some businesses and we had enough a nest egg to where it, um it wasn't uh too bad of a risk for us at the time but uh you know we quickly turned into money managers and trying to find out how to invest our money the proper way and and how to you know do things and um man i wanted to buy a business i think i i learned over the time of my career that i'm not really good having a boss and that's not a a slight to any of my old bosses (laughs) um but it's really more of a observation about myself um i have big ideas and I have, uh, you know, a history with my brothers that we kind of test boundaries and we're going to try things and you know, we're going to figure things out. 
and we're not really rule breakers, but we're not really rule followers either. Either, yeah. And uh, it doesn't really make for a great employee. Um, <laughs> so, uh, makes for a great entrepreneur, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. totally, totally. So totally. it's uh, it took a while for you know to realize that about myself, and and you know I I admit that you know I've had some run-ins with some some bosses in the past, and more than just one. This is not a you know. If any boss sees this, they like it was. It probably happened more than one, you know, more than one or two, and and that's really just an observation about myself that hey, uh, you know, there's something bigger and better, and uh, I'm ready. You know, I'm I turned 50 years old this year. I've got three small kids, and uh, life is for the adventure. You know, I'm a yeah, you know, I'm a big believer that you know, as a Christian to um, you know, we should make big moves. We should make bold moves and, you know, have faith that like, uh, you know, things are going to be okay. And, um, uh, you know, God's kind of with you in those things. And so I started looking for something, uh, about two years ago, to be honest, it was, it was, is a while. I think I started in the, uh, as the, towards the end of COVID and then, then we had a baby and, uh, baby life took over for about a year <laughs> and then, uh, we know resume. how that goes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like puppy life right now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. So I resumed my search, uh, I would say about a year ago. And, um, you know, I, I looked at a lot of businesses, you know, and I've got, I told you, I've got a little bit of a broad, um, experience, everything from construction, to internet businesses um and i looked at all of them uh and there were some really good construction businesses and there's um there were some you know there weren't a lot of great internet businesses e-com businesses um and and e-commerce has, has really been my skill set the last 13 years um so Feel free to stop me. I know I'm rambling. No, we're 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 we're, we're this enjoying is, the story. So we're, we're getting going. there. We're getting yeah, to the point of yeah. yeah. So keep going. Yeah, we're kind of coming out of that. So <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I knew I wanted to find something of my own, and uh, and I knew it. I think that time in the corporate setting just really validated you know my skill sets, and I think that having something my own uh, would allow me to kind of reach those heights that I know that, you know, I know that I'm going to re- we're going to reach together. And so, you know, I started my search again and, um, you know, those, I think I, I forget how I found candy machines. It was, uh, they, they were on the market and but they were not on the market as candy machines it was on the market as something else i didn't really understand it you know and then you kind of like it's vending and you can't you know like what is this again it was very unique and uh and i I, like i i don't know anything about those things (laughs) and so i honestly i kind of i it was an e-commerce business so it kind of remained towards the top of my stack i and I evaluated probably over 50 businesses uh, in the in about a um, I would say six months um, period, and I had a lot of serious conversations with a lot of them. Um, but this one kind of came around, and honestly, uh, uh, I had I think I might have had a, a conversation with a business broker or maybe even Harris and, and Kevin at the time, and and after that first conversation, I just kind of. Um, I kind of just put it away. I, I I didn't think it was for me. Um, but I'll tell you another thing about myself is that you know I'm a big believer of of walking through doors that God opens. And um, I got a call from their business broker and said, Hey, uh, I I you know we would love you know we I think you need to take another look at this. And uh, and I honestly I was. Uh, I found a uh, another business, not candy machines, that I was really excited about. Um, it was in the cookware space where I had where I had spent the last eight years of my career, and I had a plan for it. And I'm like, this is a great product, you know. I know what to do. I know how to sell this thing, and um, you know, the 
the uh, Harris's broker called me back and said, hey, I, you know, you should take another look at this. I think I think there's something here. And I said, OK, yeah, I'll take a look at it. And um, I go and uh, I, I'm, I'm all in and, and the whole time. I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm buying this other business, man. Like I, I <laughs> like I got to go. And so I, I go and whip up an offer really fast and uh, I missed it by a day. That they had accepted someone else's offer, and that was for me was confirmation that you know it was just a door that closed. I was really upset about it because I had talked to a lot of people in 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 the industry. I got and I had a mentor that I worked with, and he was like, "This is great, man. This has got distribution, all these things." And so it, I, I missed out, and it was um, you know here I am a few, in, in my search and 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 in the business purchasing uh sphere like some people search for like years to find a, a, a the right business fit it can take a while um i'll, I'll say covid may, may have sped it up a lot because um business brokers you know you know people have had a list you know things on the internet versus you know doing things organically meeting at chambers to commerce and locally and stuff so there was a lot of a lot of activity online uh over the last several years so um so i was able to kind of speed through that process and luckily um so when that uh, <clears throat> all that to say is that uh when that business that i wanted went away i i had had candy machines at the top of the pile and i was like all right let me, let me take a look at this again and and man i i, I can't yeah here we are <laughs> finding all that to say this like i can't like imagine passing this thing up uh Harris and Kevin are two of the most genuine people and like amazing people that you will ever meet yeah. um at, 100%. and they are uh they have a lot to be proud of uh and you know they Harris and, and Jerry you know they're they're retirement age and then and darn it they they deserve to retire they have worked long enough and uh they've got a great business here um and so i'm happy to that they trusted me with this uh this business to to agree to kind of partner with me on this and uh and kevin you know kevin's been running this show for a long time and and uh there's a lot going in this business i'm learning very quickly how involved it is uh say a prayer for me because <laughs> like it's a lot to <laughs> juggle but uh you know we're gonna do great we're gonna be we're gonna be just fine we're retaining um everyone just about of this in this business and and we're gonna focus on you know the strength that uh harris and kevin have built up over the last mm -hmm. few years uh candy machines is a staple in the industry and as I said in, in some of my quotes out there that like, I, I honestly feel like I, my role here is to be a, a good steward of that brand and just uh, honor those, uh, the ethos that they built on this company, uh, around the company and uh, serve that customer you know, just as Kevin and Harris would. Uh, we are fully committed to doing exactly that. Um, we are in, if you talk to any of the the staff at candy machines nothing's changed they are everything that's the you know i called in like the day of the acquisition they're like still on the phones I'm like okay Andy. <laughs> like, like business as usual and i really love that so uh exciting plans coming for us but long story short um that's kind of how we got there um you know a little bit of me and a little bit of you know how i found it um Man, and uh, it's just exciting times. I, I know I got a lot of work, but uh, it's it's a, it's going to be a lot of fun too. Yeah, well, it's a fun business, and I think that's what the, that's what we Matt and I have learned is that you know no matter which part of it you're in, it's 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 an amusement business, and it's it's a lot of fun. So if and if yeah, you don't have fun, fun doing yeah. it, you don't belong. I mean, it's just it's <laughs> supposed to be fun. Right. You know what I mean? Like it is, and um, <clears throat> I think that you know Matt, David, and I on on all of our every every live stream when we talk about candy machines is is 
there's nobody better at customer service than candy machines and totally. following through with their customers and taking care of people. And that was, you know, Harrison, Kevin's biggest thing was like, it doesn't matter if it's nine o'clock at night, you know, that, that person's standing there with their machine, not working and they need help and they're willing to talk on the phone and help that person. And it, it's, they've always been like that. And that's the kind of stuff that is, it, you know, that people want to hear is that none of that is going to change because I think that that is what made candy machine so great is that it, it is, you know, you got, you guys were always so helpful. So it's, yeah, it's, nice, yeah. it's nice to hear that. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear that too. Uh, you know, I think, uh, one, that's just who they are. Um, yeah. you know, I don't think anyone had to ask Kevin or, or Harris to do those things. Um, uh, Kevin was going to do it and that's what he expects of his, uh, of his, uh, staff as well. Um, you know, I think what I, want to try to bring to the table here is efficiency into everything a little bit. I think there's been the business has grown uh, a lot over the years. Um, they've definitely, um, you know, they've had their own acquisitions on their side as well that are part of this company now. And uh, that's brought a lot of growth and, um, and some growing pains. And I think under, you know, the new a new entity and a, a new fresh start we're gonna we're gonna thrive uh and fix a lot of the uh we're gonna help bring transparency to a lot of these questions that i see on discord you know how do i do this how to do, do that like so we'll we'll build some great knowledge bases and that's quick and easy accessible so those and so those answers are easily found um and i think the discord is fantastic for um you know helping each other out too right so yeah um we can organize the content that we have you know there's hundreds of videos on the candy machines uh youtube channel oh yes and there's and and there's even more on everyone else's channels too that you know speak <laughs> about our machines this is yeah, true, yeah. this is true. <laughs> so just just organizing that content would be you know, a treasure trove of resource for a new operator. Um, and granted, all they have to do is raise their hand on the Discord and someone's within a few minutes is, is most likely going to help point them to the answer. Isn't that but, so awesome? Uh, oh my yeah, God, it really so... is. Um, but, you know, we want to probably organize. We, we deserve, the customer should de deserve to have that information organized and accessible to them to, as well. And we want to try to do that. And I think that should alleviate and make more make ultimately make people more confident in their choice and uh, understand like how they can get up and running faster. Like this, the way I see it is. We're helping people build businesses and make more money, <clears throat> and I think that's the way Kevin's always saw it. Um, you know, I want you to come in and get started. I want I don't want to. Um, uh, extort you on prices and um, but I want to enable and show you a, a great quality product that I can make and uh, he's done that tenfold so we will we'll carry that on and, and the what I want is to see our entrepreneurs and, and operators successful and um, one of the things that I bring to the table is that I'm really good at um, analytics and business analysis where we're going to start using that data to help point people the right direction and um you know we, we know what makes up you know what are the characteristics of a machine that optimize it for the best performance uh i think we we're starting to learn that as a community right and you know everyone's kind of saying oh hey you need a card reader or you need a you know dba and we know those things are are true granted they come with costs but you know Ultimately, if I'm if I have a location with a claw machine or a vending machine, how do I optimize that best to get the most uh, revenue for me? Um, and those are things that I'm going to try to figure out and work out and, and make those data points more transparent for the industry. Nice. I think that's great. Yeah, that absolutely. Great. Because I, I think, you know, as part of being on the the operator side of the business right you know i own machines i operate machines we're always trying to find ways yeah. to increase what we have but maybe we can't go out and find new locations or we can't go out and buy new machines right now so how can we make more money with what we have and i think that's a great point 
hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Mm. You know, we see the locker boxes, you know, the success there. And, um, and even the, the contents, I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of, uh, the conversations y'all had on your live stream and, and other videos about and just seeing the discord chatter of like you know the 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 prizes and the content that goes in every machine is is highly important of how you totally. look at that uh and with niax and and the uh the software management tools that we have at our disposal even um with the the smart claw app that uh kevin and and joel have created and are optimizing they uh you know we can we can pull exactly you know what's selling in, in a machine and whether it's a, a bag of ruffles or a you know a mr good bar like uh or uh you know a mario plush if, if we have that data you know we can we can run a, a performance data on it and 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 help uh make wise decisions <laughs> for for not only us as uh importers but also, um, you know, the you as an operator, um, you know, you don't want to waste your money and time as you know, you want to maximize that. So we're going to try to try to make that more transparent. Very cool. Sounds great, man. I'm excited. So um, <clears throat> a little more about you. Uh, so I had some uh, some questions so yeah. that are kind of just more about you because people the one thing that Kevin was was the best at was being mysterious. Like he would never yes. do a video with me. <laughs> um, you know, most people never knew what he looked like unless they saw him at the NBVA show or at, or at IAPA. But if you, I mean, you never really knew who Kevin was but only on the phone, but he talked to everybody. Um, so um, it's good that we got to get you on here and to get to learn a little bit more about you. Um, tell us something about yourself that people would, may not know that's kind of interesting or unique that about you that's different. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one, I will tell you that uh, <laughs> I want some of uh, the characteristics of Kevin to rub off on me. Like he is such a great <laughs> person, and I agree with you. All this that the the, the mystery of him is uh, is still there with me as well. But uh, you know, he's he's just a great guy, and uh, you know, he um, one thing. Uh, that I love about not just Kevin, but the entire candy machines uh, family. Gosh, everyone's so loyal and every, they are loyal, not to just each other, to, but to the business, but also to the customers. Um, totally. Yeah, they are. That is a uh, that was incredibly evident from them, like from walking in the door of just speaking to the, each person. Um, so how you know about me like i think i crave that i think i crave you know that being around people that uh have that uh that loyalty you know yeah. my wife is part of uh, is what one of those people um and i'm just blessed to have uh someone who's committed to me in that way <laughs> maybe a blind loyalty or whatever but um you know i think god's just kind of put this room full of people around me so the I think a unique characteristic about me, I've uh, I've been through hard times. You know, I think life is 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 you you can't avoid it. Um, I've been through tragedies and things, and it's I think that's you know built some resiliency in my in me and 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 to not really think too uh, drastically about a lot of things. This is a big undertaking for myself, and. Uh, we're probably going to have a few bumps in the road <laughs> as we transition, but that's okay. I'm, I don't really uh, worry about it too much because I know who, not just who I am, but I know what this company is and I know the products that we're, we're going to roll out, man, we got a good plan. But um, yeah. So specifically, Jonathan, feel free to splice this together. I know I'm kind of, going around. <laughs> but specifically, uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've got four brothers and I, um, two of my two oldest brothers have passed away. I think that's the kind of the thing that kind of defines who I am. Uh, I lost one when I was little and I lost one when, uh, uh, about 10 years ago when I, uh, as an adult. And, you know, neither one was easy. Uh, and but it's, you know, who I am and it's who what's make up made up my family. And uh, man, we just I just love all my, my brothers and all my family. Uh, a, a lot and just really proud to, to kind of 
uh, be in this position where we can we can kind of work on something together. I've always kind of looked for that band of brothers uh, in the business world to uh, to kind of emulate what I had growing up. And you know, cool. when when you grow up and everyone gets married and kind of goes on to different uh, sides of the country, and uh, it's hard to kind of keep that camaraderie together. And you know, here I am. You know, we're gonna we're gonna try to emulate a little bit of that uh, here at Candy Machines. Nice. Very cool. It's like coming it's full circle. Yes. That's yeah, awesome. for sure. Yeah. Um, so being not in the industry and coming to something totally new uh, and watching, sounds like a lot of YouTube videos, uh, being in the Discord incognito for a while yeah. and just kind of sitting back and watching everybody <laughs> and what they do. Um, what's your overall feeling of, of where you think the industry is right now? And then maybe how you can help or where you think the industry might be going that you would like to see, like maybe like a future future yeah. outlook from you of what you think. Cause you're coming from a totally different perspective than, and we, you know, Matt and I were there two. well, I was there two years to almost three years ago. He's been in the industry a lot longer than I have, but I mean, I came from a different point of view too and had a different outlook, but I'd like to hear what you think coming from, you know, an e-commerce type, um, you know, background and see what you think for sure yeah one uh just to caveat what i'm about to say is uh yeah i've got a background in marketing and, and internet entrepreneurship uh i will bring some of those uh skill sets into candy machines but we are in no means <laughs> going to try to turn this into a marketing machine type thing where uh you know it's just it's just not going to get we're not going to follow you on facebook and uh with ads or anything we're not i'm that's not who candy machines is i think what um all that to say is uh i i i you I, yeah i think there's there's a there can be a sentiment in this industry because everyone is so hard working and so um and and really wanting to scrap together a business that they don't want to be taken advantage of um and i think there's a, a good way and a bad way to do that um and uh i think Ke and kevin and harris have carved out a great way of of showing authenticity and a commitment to the community and uh i'm fully committed to do the same so that being said um you know what's my vantage point uh gosh uh i see newness and then that's really kind of where things are. I know there's, you know, people have been in this industry for 30, 40 years, you know, that are still active in the in uh, in their routes and uh, in their business and and in the community. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, it's a, a the seasons are changing and there's a, a definitely a lot of new blood out there. Uh, everyone in the Discord it seems to be uh, in general a, a younger audience. So um, and in the in the Facebook groups, there's a lot of interest of, hey, I, I stumbled across this. How can I get started? You know, you know, what do you think of this two hundred dollar machine I found on Facebook? <laughs> right? Yeah, I get those questions every day. Every day. Yeah, yes, right. every day. <laughs> so um, I think that uh, there is interest and I think that there are barriers to be broken down and to demystify what vending is and how to get started to enable more entrepreneurs to bring them into the system. And I think that's overall a healthier uh, community because uh, the guy that buys the $200 machine off of Facebook, you know, just quickly making a decision, thinking I can get started. There are definitely some successes that have started that way, but uh, there, there's a lot of flame outs too. Right. And we know we know exactly why, because, you know, those machines break down uh, because you've got service calls and it was a lot more work than you thought it would be. Um, and so if we can really properly educate and, and demystify and, and have a easy way to onboard people into the industry, and I'm not talking about selling courses, uh, not no offense to anyone that does. Um, I'm just talking about bringing our expertise and making it available 
in a very clear step-by-step -step manner. Um, I think that would help grow the industry. And so one, Jonathan, you have, I think you have a, a very high interest in, in these type, this type of industry. Um, you see a lot of people looking for investment opportunities of side hustles and things. And uh, the sweaty startups are, uh, are very popular online. And there's sweaty startups. I, I never heard yeah. that before. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's yeah. it's very, very um popular thing to to go out and buy a uh a, a storage unit, uh, uh oh, or yeah. self storage unit, you know, um business. And because of all the the tax benefits and the, the recurring revenues and all this, well, guess what a claw machine is, you know. It, it, it probably that a, a, a mini a super mini will pr probably makes more than a than your single you know storage unit. One, yeah, <laughs> totally. per month on a per month basis. Yeah, it totally makes more money than right. a single storage unit. Yes, right. And what you're saying and is... can you depreciate that asset like you can a piece of real estate? Yes, you can. Right. You so you it's the same tax benefits it, with without having to buy you know. Uh, a million dollar piece of real estate or um, yes, taking on more mortgage. So the way is. Ent entry point to scale and, and to build out your own, uh, you know, your own business and in, in like recurring, you know, it, multiple income streams, uh, the entry points, is, is, there's no comparison uh, to to what vending can provide. So if we can take what we just said and that we know is a truth, <laughs> and make it more visible to those people who are looking for ways, I think there's a way to open up a, a, a whole nother stream of, of people into the business. And, and that is a healthier industry overall. I think, you know, keeping it secret and keeping it uh, unorganized in the way that it is, uh, will, you know, keeps some of the players in place um, but it doesn't grow the industry and it doesn't really, you know, it, uh, it, it kind of keeps everyone struggling. I think if, if we want to grow as an industry and grow as business owners you know, and operators, you know, you kind of need, uh, as the discords and the Facebook groups and the communities that we are in have shown us, having people around you to support you uh, only makes you more, be a better business person <laughs> and a better operator. Um, and I think we can do that in a much more way. If everyone, you know, were in the in these groups weren't um, kindergarten uh, knowledgeable in as to vending, you know, on our, you know the 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 newbies. If but if they were to walk in with middle school, you know, knowledge or even high school knowledge, you know, having read some information about it and says, I think I have a good plan here. I've already got, you know, I've gone steps through A Z through Z. I think you got a you get a healthier community at that point. And then um and, and some excitement. So um so that's a long long answer <laughs> to say that I think it's going good. And <clears throat> yep. Go, uh, and I just want to say on the machine side, Jonathan, like you're um we are going to uh, I think there's a lot of new cool stuff coming out. <laughs> I know there is. I'm excited. I know. I, I'm excited <laughs> to see what might be in store at the show. Like I, uh, I was, I was talking to Kevin the other day. I was trying to get him to tell me some stuff, and he just wouldn't. And I think, uh, I think I, I can't wait to see what's going to be at the show. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. just coming in and to where we we are now. I mean, claw machines. I mean, claw machines are are hot, right? And uh, before that, I mean, credit card. You know, I think the the Nyaxes of the world and the um, the Kiosofts and all the intelligence that are packaged into these little boxes, uh, we're just beginning to see like the, what that means to us as an industry. Yeah. Uh, I've kind of shared with you kind of some of the abilities and, and the thoughts that I had around that. But uh, you know, as an industry, like we got we got some huge possibilities to to do things here. So really excited about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, and, and there's I have a, even ideas that do with with things you can do with Nax and Kiosoft that as e individual vendors or individual locations and stuff, not just having like 
um, you know, the places where you have multiple machines with one system. Um, I have some ideas on that too. So I think that things are going to change. Um, you know, I know we're working on some stuff that I talked to you about. Uh, I know you got some great stuff coming out that everybody's excited about. Well, they haven't know they don't know yet, but they will be very excited about. And um, it's all happening within a week. And I wanted to go back to what you said um, about you know, the allowing or not allowing, but in, in empowering these people that are getting into the industry. And when Matt and David and I got together in the beginning, <clears throat> it's been a little over two years now we've been doing this, that when we got together, that was our philosophy. You know, we're like, we we struggled like it was so hard for us to get going there weren't videos you know there was like one or two people doing them uh you didn't have any answers to anything david was learning everything about the machines because nobody had them but him you know so we all kind of started with this this big struggle and we're like i think there's there's a space out there to have a live stream to have a discord to have these things that <clears throat> can help these people get started and i think that that's something that candy machines was always very good about is that if you picked up the phone and called Candy Machines and and um, spoke to Kevin or even just one of the customer service agents, they'll walk you through it. You know, they'll tell you about how the machines work, what you can do with it, what you can't, which you can't really find that kind of information out other than watching our videos or the Discord or that kind of thing. But a lot of people, because the Discord is still new, um, aren't aware of it when they get into the industry unless they hear us talking about it. But um, you know, I think that that's what's great about candy machines, and and if you if that's what you're all about, man, I think you're gonna do fantastic because it's totally. it is, it is a whole new industry. It's a whole new outlook on stuff, and I think that with you know people like us, that that that's what we believe. We believe that we, you know I I learn something in the Discord every single day because of the person that's only been doing it three weeks has an idea that nobody's thought of yet because they looked at it from a different point of view, like you coming in from a different industry. That's what we need. We need new ideas. Totally. We need totally. new stuff. And I think that that's what's great about the Discord and 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 what you got planned. I think it's it's just it's going to be awesome. So I'm super excited. It's great. great. Yeah. Yeah. I will say too. Yeah. You know, I I don't know if you're able to kind of communicate this to to the the groups or not, but uh, I mentioned this to Matt uh, when we spoke earlier this week and. Uh, you know this this MBVA is is highly important. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and it's one, and, and I'm saying this from a candy machine's perspective. It's highly important um, to celebrate everything Harris and Kevin have done. Yep. Um, this, uh, you know, I don't think they'll, I don't think they'll, you'll, they'll ever go away. I think um, they're just so ingrained in things, but. Uh, we built a great relationship and we're going to continue to do to to have a strong relationship but man uh they deserved some celebration and yeah. uh they deserve some appreciation you know i think uh, i would just encourage uh anyone that has uh, uh considered coming to the to the event to come you know we want to we want to really get a chance to for everyone to meet them and and uh you know to kind of download their stories with them uh harris has been quite emotional this week talking to her her long-term suppliers and vendors that she's worked yeah. with for close to 30 years um so there's a lot a lot of learn of uh, things that uh you know we can learn from them and uh this is a great opportunity to do opportunity to to, but, to learn but also to to uh, you know celebrate and um be part of that transition uh together as a as a community very cool yeah it is it's it's i think it's the biggest show of the year even though it's not even as big as is app i think for for us it is it is the biggest show uh and Agreed. i think part of that is it's because it's smaller you know what i mean and it's only about us and that's it's, it's cool. the most fitting for us exactly yeah. like mm -hmm. you know andy jonathan and i we were we were we were both in it at iapa in florida this past november and while it was great to see you know, the claw machines you were there too so so yeah. you know what we're talking about so it's great from a vending or you know claw machine standpoint but iapa is so much more than that that it's it's all it's like too overwhelming there's too many other things yeah so this show is yeah. more focused on what we're all into so that's why we like this show the best i yeah. uh i had one word summation of iapa was overstimulation yeah <laughs> yes seriously and 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 I, what i couldn't believe is that 
you know, our little area where I think it was yellow. What color was it? I think it was yellow. I, it was I couldn't even tell you what color it was. I can't remember what point. it is now, but <laughs> I mean, it was such a small part of everything that was there. And I mean, we almost got lost. I mean, I think the water slide area was bigger than our area. I mean, it was just like, you know, as far as the machines and stuff, I mean, it just, it was crazy. Like it was just really cool. Overwhelming. Um, I think that, you know, if you're, you're an FEC operator and then maybe you could have got a little more out of it than, than, than just, you know, vendors like we are but um it is it is very cool and i i think that it was yeah i had a good time but it was very overwhelming i think that yeah. i got a lot more i got a lot more one-on-one time at, at mbva every yes. single year i went was yeah. like i got to actually talk to somebody you know everybody wasn't it wasn't yeah. thousands and thousands of people so it it felt very very small but in a good way you know yeah so um so what superpower do you wish you had if you could have a superpower? Oh, <laughs> easy, easy answer. I, w- I want to be able to play NBA level basketball like LeBron James. Like he's not my favorite player, but I want to be able to like be that athletic and dunk. And uh, I am not that way right now. <laughs> but that's uh, a good one. That I want to be able to be like that. Maybe prime Michael Jordan or something. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, so I know you can't go into any special details or anything in the future. Um, but what what do you think that you would like to leave everybody with? Like, what do you what can people expect next, or or a final thought you'd like to leave with people about where you where you see things going or something, whatever yeah. you want Candy to say. Machines. Yeah. For cane machines, yeah. You know, I looked at way when I looked at the business and done it, did my due diligence. I'm like, oh, you know, we gotta, we gotta clean the slate here, like focus on you know what we do best or something. And honestly, like uh, every part of the business is is complementary and, and and important. So I think we'll continue to do everything we do today, and uh, you know, at the same level of 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 importance. Um, and that's you know gumballs and and that, you know, gumball machines and um, the plush, all those supplies and toys. I mean, I walk through the warehouse and it is it is massive. And then that under managing that warehouse and that flow of inventory is, is a, a huge undertaking. But, you know, I think that's the beauty of, of candy machines is that we, we get that stuff to you you know, within a day of, of order so in most quick. cases. That's so awesome. So quick. Yeah. And, and there, and, and we need suppliers like that and, and, uh, and distributors like that here. Um, I know we, there's a lot of, you know, overseas suppliers that we compete with, but having a domestic you know, resource is, is, is highly important for this industry, you know, um, especially if you want to get people started and, and gr- to grow the industry. So one will, we will continue to do everything we do today. But I think, too, like uh, we're just touching just one small segment of a segment of vending. And, uh, you know, what I've learned is that there are many more categories of vending out there. Uh, So I'm exploring a way so that we can, uh, you know, offer more categories uh, that will complement. I think we have a broad enough customer group that we can start uh, testing those things out. And uh, here's what I want to commit to to not just myself and Kevin Harris, but to to you guys and and, the, and all of our customers is that uh, no one has painstakingly uh, held a quality that built a quality machine like Kevin does. Like Kevin uh, assures that everything has built and uh, in under his a uh, watch has been uh, meticulously thought through and, and iterated. And, and one thing I've noticed is that he's almost like the Steve Jobs of, of claw machines because there's another version coming right behind it, right? Yeah. And it, he's perfecting it. And um, and I, I love that because he's not resting on a, a, a standard case and, you know, shipping it to you. Uh, these, these are highly customized machines. So as we look at looking to adding new machine types, it's the same level of quality will go into that. Uh, we've got the same team uh, behind the scenes that we work with, the same local manufacturers here in the United States and uh, manufacturing partners 
in the United States that are uh, going to continue to partner with us as we branch out into uh, and look at new categories. So by the time we do launch a, uh, a product, uh, it's going to be just as exciting as what uh, what everything we've done before. And uh, I think there's some freshness, too, that we can bring to the things that we do. Um, uh, so I'm really excited about that, too. So the you know, some freshness in the claws and freshness in the, the vending side. Uh, you know, not many people know, but we do, you know, full line vending as well. Um, <laughs> if Matt does. So uh, I just bought four brand new full line machines from candymachines.com. So I totally know. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so those guys are, are great at what they do. Um, so ultimately, we want to be known as um, manufacturers of high quality cash flowing machines and you should have zero interest in buying machine if it doesn't if you don't have a proof template that this thing makes money and is you know and and if it's going to cause you a maintenance you know nightmare you should walk away um that's one thing that we we are focused on in, in building quality machines that uh, that you can trust and uh, if you have problems with you know i think what proven is that we're going to jump right on it so uh, yeah, that's that's the plan. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I think that's really reassuring to hear because I know like, you know, I saw, you know, the Facebook post today. I saw everything and people said, oh, my God, you know, is the service going to go down? And I think that's probably everyone's biggest concern. So it's really yeah. great to hear you come in here and kind of reassure everyone that service is going to be the number one kind of priority, that nothing should change from that standpoint, because that's kind of what CandyMachines.com is known for is their amazing customer service. So amazing you know, customer service. Yeah. that yeah. that goes, you know, miles beyond everything else when it comes to importance to everyone out there. So yeah. thank you again for reassuring for that. 100%. So we got we have to look at wait for ways to to make that uh, service uh, more empowering um, and less demanding on uh on this side of, of the request, right? Because uh, I know Kevin, he's, you know, he's works a full day. He gets up early and uh, he's answering emails and he's res you know, talking to China and, and uh, he's responding to Facebook groups and all these things in between um, and still, still FaceTiming with a customer over little things. Will the service go down? Like, look, I, I, I don't know the machines well enough as Kevin, but we are going to put people in place and, and that do. Um, and we are going to find uh, solutions to answer these things. And I think that the the faster that we can build a knowledge base, you know, so that we can quickly send people answers that are, that maybe aren't as demanding on our staff as they are today. Um, and I will tell you that they deserve a vacation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they are absolutely. They are, very yeah. committed to their work um and uh and i'm very committed to them you know as people uh i want them to enjoy their job but I also want them to enjoy their life <laughs> and totally. uh so we got to we got to find this happy balance of as a community of uh allowing a business to thrive uh in um in a healthy way and uh you know, we, we will still commit, you know, we're still fully committed to this, uh, to the level of service that Harrison and, and, and Kevin has, has instilled in the company, but we're just going to, we're going to try to add in, uh, some features that, uh, make it more accessible and, and, and efficient. Nice. And for those of you who sent me messages when they saw the posts, um, we have confirmation from Andy that the giveaways on our live streams are still going to happen. It's <laughs> every, we're still doing those with candy machines. You'll still be helping out the young entrepreneurs of the world and doing the nonprofit giveaways. So none of that's going to change. So everybody can relax. We're still going to do call machine giveaways. So thank you, Andy, for continuing and doing the stuff with us on our live streams. And, and like you said earlier, I mean, we're all about helping people and that's our goal. So that's why exactly. we do it. So 100 percent. Yeah, I'm real excited. And, you know, thank you all for, for everything y'all do. It's a little bit of a, I wanted to say um, surreal. You know, that's what people say when they meet each other for the first time. It's so <laughs> surreal. I've been watching you for six months. And honestly, uh, I, because I have been watching you for so long, it feels uh, familiar. Nice. Well, good. 
So it's, and we've uh, talked on the phone offline too a little bit, and and you could tell that this is who we really are. You know, we're not mm-hmm. any different on the phone or in person. Sure. Um, you know, we 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 just talk like normal people because we are normal people. So, you know, I don't get out and go on my Lamborghini and drive to the store when I get out of here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, no, it's all good, and and I I'm I'm very excited for Andy. I'm very excited for Candy Candy Machines and and the future of Candy Machines. I think that they got an awesome leader, an awesome new leader, and it sounds like you want everything to, you know, with with a little bit of help, stay the same, which is fantastic, and that's what everybody loves about Candy Machines. And I I I wish you the best, man. I'm so excited Holy. for you. Yeah. I, Thank we, you we, so we, much, guys. You know, appreciate the the time and. You know, I'm, I'm going to try to be as accessible as, as I can. Obviously, I will be at NBVA next week. I, I fly out to uh, Salt Lake tomorrow uh, to kind of meet with the staff again and, and meet with Kevin. And we're all going to you know, be flying together to, to Vegas. Uh, so we'll be able to meet and greet with everyone there and meet nice. everyone in person. So we're real excited about that. Uh, uh, I will, you know, hopefully ask for patience uh, over these next few <laughs> weeks as, as we transition there's a lot that goes into transitioning accounts and in, in business, even not just from the customer side, but from uh, the the vendor and supplier side. You know, we we've got a lot of a lot of moving parts. Um, so uh, customers should know no difference, uh, uh, other than like, hey, is this promo still live? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, we will. There are codes that are are definitely uh, still live. Um, I think the same code today. Uh, exist and my, I think we changed a little bit of, of the, we there was a code that was supposed to um, end in the uh, end of February that uh, it just it got carried in into the last week so we it is back to where we are normal promotions and uh, all those normal things will continue I'll try to be as active as I can on the face uh, on the uh, discords and Facebook groups but it might take me a week or two to to fully commit to to responding to uh, you know as quickly and and as as helpful as as Kevin has. Nice. Well, we'll we'll also be providing support in the Discord too. So don't yeah, worry about that out there, guys. <laughs> yeah, and every Wednesday night. So we'll be yes, every Wednesday night too. Exactly. Yes. You know, we love candy machines. We 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 love you know all everything that that Kevin and Harris did for us for all totally. of our giveaways and totally. and for. I mean, they're the ones that got Amelia and Sam started in the business, um, starting with Amelia and got her her first machines. So oh, um, wow. we wouldn't even be here without them. So for us, I mean, it's 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 pretty heartfelt for 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 um, Kevin and, and, and Harris from the beginning, because for us, it's it's personal, you know, so I'm excited that it's got, you know, somebody good at the helm and it, it looks like everything's going to go well. So I'm excited. Very cool. Me too. Thank you all for everything. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be talking soon again. Yeah, I can't wait to meet you in person. Yeah, we're thank definitely so going to meet up in Vegas doing, for sure. Yeah, thank you. So to meet you in person. The video and and in the interview and um and all that. So thank you guys. Thanks, Andy. All right. Andy. All, right. all right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>